thanks to Lean Frontiers, uh, Skylar in particular, who does quite a bit behind the scenes to make these things actually happen. So we're joined primarily by Sean Haney. If those of you who are already on would have heard the discussion in the last couple of minutes, we've got a compatriot, Dustin McGowan, who's joining us as well. But Sean is currently the Technical Training Coordinator at Attendus Hygiene Partners at the Greenville plant. He has 31 years of manufacturing experience working previously in paper mill businesses for Procter & Gamble Paper Products and Fort Howard Paper. He has worked as a plant technician, sh shift supervisor, platform manager, and safety manager. Sean, welcome, and thank you very much for joining us. Great to be here. So the two of you uh, attended the Carter training that followed the uh, CarterCon back in uh, April, March or April in Indiana. And uh, based on your feedback and your participation during, it was positively received and there was quite a bit of enthusiasm. Um, then reality set in and you had to go and make this stuff work. So, Sean, this discussion's about what happened when you faced the reality of uh, getting going and getting other people um, on the same bus that you guys were uh, got on as far as the summit was concerned. So tell us a little bit about that. What happened in the first week when you went back, for example, Sean? What was the first thing you struck, positive or negative? Well, that's a... Uh, you know what? I'll, I'm going to say neither nor. <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, it's it's uh, it's positive. You know, really, uh, the outlook on it was positive. It was, it was received. Um, it was was received well. Uh, but so when you say was, it was received well, what did you do? What? How did you communicate? Or yeah. What did you do to get started? So basically, I just you know I I use the inter. I, somewhat of an introduction format as to what kata is, what it means, where it derived from and, and, and where we're going with it and the, and, and the basic steps uh, that you're taking through the process. Uh, you know, it, it, it did it in a short time. I held about an hour meeting and, 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 and walked some of the leaders through it. And that being our platform managers, um, uh, the shift supervisors, all the way up to the plant manager. So I had about 12 attendees in that session yes. and uh, I fed them. So that was a good idea. Uh, to you feed fed them. them. Uh, oh yeah. Right. Know. Okay. Yeah. I fed them. So uh, it, it helps, you know, especially over lunchtime, but uh, it, it was well, well received. Um, but there was, there were some mistakes that I made. Uh, so just hang on two seconds before you go on yeah. to that. What was sure. your main thrust of the message? How did you, do you remember how you described it? What was the main thrust yeah. of your message? Well, the, the main thrust of the message is, 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 is that we need to, you know, em, em, empower our employees right. and give them the, the move towards scientific thinking on problem solving, which of course is going to take their input. It, yes. it has to involve their input. So, and, and that was, that was the main message that I tried, you know, that I was driving through was empowering our employees uh, okay. to affect change. <clears throat> empowering. That's a good strong. And, and I doubt whether there'd be too many management groups that would argue with that one. Um, and then, but you did say that you run into a couple of hurdles or some hurdles surfaced. So tell us a bit about those. Yes, absolutely. So we are, the, the plant was, you know, at the time was going under some uh, uh, some leadership changes. Uh, we actually had a little change in the structure. Uh, you know, who's reporting to who, and and, and 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 different things. And we had a couple of new titles, including the addition of a new continuous improvement manager. Sure. Uh, and it was all in the middle of transition, so nothing. You know, personnel weren't uh, identified yet. Right. Uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're kind of floating through a certain, you know, uh, time in, in space where, um, you would much rather have had your key players in place. Yeah. Right. Uh, already. So, you know, so the difficulty was, well, I don't know how long that's going to take, uh, you know, for, for, to get those people in place, didn't know what that yes. looked like. Uh, so wanting to move forward what i didn't want was to lose complete traction 
and right. to not have anything moving forward. So yeah, the idea we, was get it on the map. Yeah, because we spoke um, you know, during our sessions in April, particularly towards the end, about keeping the momentum going. You know, it's all about it's very important for you guys to maintain the practice following the training we did. So therefore, any delay, um, you know, I read somewhere a long time ago that every training has a half-life. So any delay was going to be um, exponential, if you like, in terms of your ability to um, to retain and then practice. So that's um, so. How did you get around that? What did you do? What did you, what ended up happening? Well, you know, w with that transition in there, so the challenge became: um, was it the right time? Did we want to? Did we want to begin a practice? And because of the change that was, you know, the, the face of the plant and the infrastructure that was going on, uh, you know, and, and in discussing this in the opening uh, with, with leadership, um, we came up with the idea of, of, of trying to establish the practice without notifying the employees because we didn't want to create a flavor of the day atmosphere. Yes. And then if it did drag, if we did experience, you know, roadblocks and we weren't able to get through or work through we didn't want it to be negatively received by the employees sure. so with with that with that in mind um we we wanted to do something to get going and, and hopefully from that uh we, we we the thinking was that we could establish um something that says hey look at what we accomplished and yeah. then say employees this is how you did this yeah by you know, the way looking back yeah. by the way yeah so what did you do yeah so well we we uh we we actually found a, a uh we created a, a goal and that challenge okay so the challenge that that we put forward was to i mean there's a material we use in our product and it's an elastic material so it's very finicky it's very uh it it it, it does not you can end up with a lot of variability in, into the into the raw material that affects and it really really makes troubleshooting in the process difficult right. um so there are a lot of key things about it and and so what we wanted to do because we were having we were experiencing somewhere right around 14 percent of our total downtime was attributed to this material and what was going on in the process so that was part so, of the current uh, condition Yes, yes. And, and, and so the, the, the challenge was to get uh, elastic breaks, the downtime associated with that, down to uh, 5% or less of the total downtime. Right. So, yeah, and, and so they're, they're, from that process, if we looked at it, we were looking at that raw material. We, we were looking at uh, as it arrives into the plant. It's so just be, excuse me, before you go on, on, sorry, hang on, Sean, before you go on, who's we? You said we, what, so who's we? Who was on the team, if you like? Who was, who was, who was the we? Well, you know, that's a, that's a great, great, great question because it was me. I should have said I. <laughs> no problem. That's why I wanted uh, clarification. You know, uh, and there's nothing wrong yeah, no, with that. No, no, um, many... it, it's it's actually not a bad idea to get going yourself and have that. Um, and it's a very good idea to have some get some self practice going before you jump in and drag other people along. So keep keep talking. Sorry. Yeah. So the uh, you know, and, and I think Dustin would would agree with this wholeheartedly. But uh, so since I've been in the business, the the elastics. What it what what you do is you see a you see a pattern where yeah. about every three years it surfaces and comes back to a, a you know in the top three downtimes across the, the entire manufacturing floor. Yeah. Right. And so then we we we're looking at we dive into uh, do, do we do things from an engineering standpoint? So we have gone from two different types of engineering and the use and the, and, and the unwinding of the elastics. We've yes. gone back and forth. This is the fifth time we're going back and it's like, we learned absolutely nothing <laughs> from the previous uh, engineering changes. And we're going back and forth without, without addressing any variability that may be introduced by 
the operators themselves. So is this part of the and, current condition? Is that what you're describing there? Yes. Yes, okay. it's it, it's part of the current condition. So as I started peeling the onion back, the layers on the onion, and you know, using root cause analysis on what the difficulties and the challenges were. So we had a third party contractor come in here for 20 days and try to uh, analyze what was taking place in our processes. Okay, and, so just hold uh, hold there, Sean. I think an important point's come up. You used root cause analysis to help you un be better understand the current condition. That's what I got from what you said then. Would that be – and you're not nodding, Dustin. Can you turn your microphone on, please? Yes, sir. Uh, so why – why uh, welcome, Dustin, and thank you for joining at really short. No notice. problem. So, so why did you pick up on that? You were nodding when I said that. Tell us a bit about why you were nodding. I mean, root cause is is really breaking down your current condition, understanding the what's and why's of of where you currently are. I mean, that's sure. that's the essence of an RCA. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fair call. That's why you're not as simple mm -hmm. as that. So, yep. um, you know, sometimes people ask us how 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 can we best understand the current condition? And there are various means that are already out there that you can slot into mm -hmm. uh, that. So that's a terrific example of that. Thank you. So Sean, keep going. You used root cause analysis yep. to understand, so, to help you understand current condition. So what we found, and as I started digging into it, is over the last 20 years, as these problems that surface from the use of elastics and the spike and in, 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 in an upward trend in efficiency loss uh, yes. surrounding them, we, they would pull a group together. They do just what we're, what we're talking about um, and do the root cause analysis. And then they, they, they'd end up coming up with one point lessons uh, on how okay. to correct, how to correct uh, employee interaction with the material itself. Uh, and, and, and the problem with that is, is the, the material was treated like all other raw materials uh, in terms of how they obtain it at the line, how they would reject it. And, but there was, no, there was no substance saying, well, what triggers a reject? What, sure. what are you looking for? What, what, what yeah, makes right. that way? And it, it, from, from the standpoint, when you're, when you're looking at these, there are, and I brought the manufacturers of the elastics in. So I brought them in on visit to identify what, what defects could possibly be there and how do we fish them out and ex get that out of there. So again, so I was, guess that was part of current condition as well, was it? That was part of yeah. your understanding of current condition. Obviously, this was quite deep. So and I'm um, conscious of time. What was the target condition you set out of all this? The first target condition. The the uh, the first target condition. Bear with me for a second. Um, oh, was to stop visible uh, visible material defects from being introduced into the process. Okay, right. So stop them coming into the plant. Well, not from coming into the plant, but stop them from stop them from the operators introducing uh -huh. them into the process because they uh -huh. they couldn't even recognize. The defects. Uh, okay, so there was an obstacle, one. Mm -hmm. So one was you, you know, the condition that you're targeting was to stop the defects entering the process. You've just mentioned an obstacle being um, uh, that they didn't even understand them or be able to recognise them. What other obstacles do you recall? Or do you have that noted there? What other obstacles? So the the the... the, the one that stems directly from that, but it's different, um, is that if they recognize the manufacturer's defect, yeah. we have to handle that reject process right from there. So we don't we don't begin prepping the material. We don't begin doing anything with it. It should be rejected. <laughs> right the handling, now what can happen with the elastics, because they are so finicky, yeah. is that you're handling and what you're doing with them can put defects into it without even realizing it, sure. without seeing it. It won't be visible. Yeah. So it's identifying a standardized work for, you know, actually taking it out of the box, inspecting it, then moving to actually employing, deploying it into the machinery. 
So that was so, the experiment, was it? That was the experiment to design, to come up with some standard work or a work standard, yeah. whatever, whatever you want yeah. to call it, to um, for the operator to do something uh, that would re reduce the risk of it hitting the process. That was your experiment, if you like. Well, that no, uh, let me you know, let me right about that. So, no, th so that will be that would be our first experiment on our next uh, target condition, which is going oh. to be. It, we're going to be able to measure the number of elastic splices that aren't done correctly and, and, and failures oh, sorry. in the splicing process. So our, our, our experiments were centered around how do we create a process flow where we don't back up the material because it's got to be removed if we reject it. So what they were ending up with is boxes and boxes and boxes of rejected <laughs> elastic that uh -huh. we had no way of obtaining the credits for them. So oh. we had a raw material coordinator that was spinning their wheels with yeah, the manufacturer right. saying, your operators caused that problem, not the manufacturer. So yeah. all those things. So we, we had to do standardized work from, from three different phases. The, right. the inspection and, and, and pre-use uh, handling of the, of the elastic. Then it's going to be the splicing process. And yeah. then finally the inspection process. So, uh, at the end, I mean, we're talking about the finished product, no um, so, and, and we have some of that done. But we got we got several that are going to be lined up. So we'll, we we actually made it through. We identified what our flow should look like. So to be able to with the experiments that we did, you now we changed a couple of things along the way uh, based on employee feedback. What I was non-realistic, you know, filling out paperwork. Uh, just there were different things that you we were looking at that, well, this could be a real challenge here and how do we create the flow? And the other part was, is we had to be careful because we didn't want to run out of that raw material. Sure. So there's so, a few constraints to the experiments. <clears throat> so I'll just hold you there. Um, so Mark Galloway asked, how did you get started? So you've heard from Sean, Again, essentially you've got, did you have a, and this is not a problem if the answer is no, and not necessarily. Did you have a storyboard at any case, or did you just keep track yourself? I look, nope, keep, I you're looking. A yeah, right. I used you... a storyboard. It just wasn't out on the floor. Yeah, right. Uh, what I was doing was I was I was updating the storyboard, you know, the PDA, uh, PDCA cycles, and I was recording it. So I used the storyboard, um, and I would take pictures of it. And uh -huh. I would send updates. I would send updates of what's happening, you know, and including the, the 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 written scanning and sending of the you know some PDF files of the the Plan Do Check Act, and yeah. uh, updating leadership. But once again, you know, one of my one of my hurdles was I didn't get I didn't get the expected leadership engagement I was looking for. Yeah, just sending them a PDF. A photo of a storyboard may not get them to buy into it. Yeah, well, they, you know, I, they were fine. But, but with, that's, with but that's fine. The it? point I wanted to check there was that you, whether you made use of the storyboard function and um and 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 who you got involved in that, or really it was just for your own means, which is fine, completely fine. So really, it was for your own means, which is which is really good. I'm just conscious of time, Sean. And I, so in terms of Mark Galloway's question, how do you get started? You've heard from that. And also um, Colin Hicks, how does the improvement carter differ from the PDCA cycle? We might just address that one. He's asked that question. Um, the reality is it doesn't. They're one and the same. The improvement carter is as a whole is a PDCA cycle. And then your experiments, a series of PDCAs going on within the big PDCA, if you like. Um, so to answer your question, Colin, the, the practicing the improvement carter can, does strengthen the PDCA approach, is the answer to the question. Sean, if you don't mind, we'll just jump to Dustin. Uh, we've heard a bit, how, Sean, how you got started. Dustin, what did you, what happened after our session, after our April um, gathering and training? What do you, what, what was your world like? So first off, it was, it was phenomenal. Um, very eye opening to the insides of, of coaching really. Um, so instant implementation to our processes. Uh, we were looking into an avenue of, of the people side of things. Um, I took this into the avenue of, of coaching cycles into people development. 
um, and then we uh-huh. opened up the the uh, the nine tails of our, our people engagement processes. Um, so coaching cycles inside our orientation processes, our, our training interactions with our employees. Um, we started our people passion project, uh, getting people to care, getting people concerned, getting people involved. This is just one of the nine tails that we launched um, once we came back uh, from that summit. Um, understanding what did we learn uh, and prioritizing that because that created our next step. We didn't go to step yeah, right. two until we learned something from step one. Uh, if we didn't learn something, we probably did something wrong or we didn't look at it enough. Um, and we did, we, well, didn't we already knew the answer. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, if we, if we already knew the answer, then why did we go through all this? So it, it was exactly. definitely, well, definitely prioritizing what we learned. <laughs> Can you just hold it? That's a great point, Dustin. If we already, if we didn't learn anything, we already knew the answer. So why do we go through all this? So, that's an important point I think you've brought up is that, um, and it's interesting, you, uh, uh, this wasn't contrived for the rest of you who were watching because Dustin wasn't expected to join us and he's got the improvement card, a poster up um, that we give out in the training right <laughs> behind him. So this was not contrived. <laughs> um, yep. But the point being is that it, it is about, expe- the scientific thinking is about extending your knowledge threshold. Go into the zone where you don't know, but go into the zone that you don't know with a routine, if you like, um, for, for you to understand and learn. So if, if you already know the answer, just do it. That's not an experiment. Just do it. it. You know, the experimental PDCA approach takes you through that gray zone. So you'd mentioned these nine things, Dustin. Um, have you got one you can tell us a bit more about in terms of the challenge and current condition just briefly? And target condition, uh, all that stuff. Oh, for sure. So one of them was our, our product production sustainability uh, training. Um, understanding, so I mean, our, our biggest challenge is what what does our operations really need to be able to maintain operations? We right. didn't we didn't have a baseline of hey, I need to know one, two, three, four, and five to be able to say we can sustain operations. Right. Um, that seems like a big concept. It, w- it was huge and, and spinning tires, you know, trying to think about it and come up with plans and, and understand how we run the business currently. What do we really need? Um, wow. Getting with our, our, our management staff to understand their side of how they view the business and what they deem important. Um, so it was bringing a lot of operations together to understand what do we so need. So what you just said then would mm-hmm. be part of current condition getting people together yes because you've raised an interesting point one of the things i often say is you don't understand you haven't grasped the current condition fully if you don't know how people are thinking and feeling in other Correct. words there's a humanistic aspect to all this mm-hmm. um as much as i love um the um toyota Carter practice guide that is a very much an engineering approach and tends to miss, in my opinion, and I've spoken to Mike Rother about this, tends to miss the um, importance of how people are thinking and feeling, and that's part of the current condition, the grasping the current condition. So I really right. like the fact that you've involved people in, in from that perspective. Well done. And so on that, that's a very big one. What was the what was the first target condition on something like that? Uh, the first target was establish what we would deem important to be able to sustain operations, to get okay. everybody on the same page. Let's just okay. go super small, get everybody on the same page, what's important. Yeah. Um, right. So once we did that, so then it was, the next target was, okay, let's put these in order and prioritize training concepts for each one of these. Ah, uh, so div- okay, fair enough. So that's where we started bringing in the job instructions method to develop uh-huh. JIs to actually complete our 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 kata process so yeah, right. we started the the intermingling between all of our different concepts yeah so the so the ji using ji and bringing that in was an experiment in itself i would imagine correct the um, training we, was an yeah. experiment the training pattern whatever it was was a became an experiment in itself that's interesting well done 
And what your what was your biggest learning through all this, Dustin? And then Sean, I'm going to ask you the same question. The biggest and what would you learn- do differently? Oh my goodness, there are probably a hundred different things I'd do differently. Um, it, it was it was all a learning process. Yeah. First off, um, learning the business. The biggest challenge we had was trying to maintain the speed of business. We get lost with how fast business moves and trying to get all these tools together in the same place and redevelop patterns. Um, no, no for, from the Carter perspective, mm-hmm. from practicing Carter, what was your biggest learning? <sighs> from getting started with yeah. Carter, what was your biggest learning? The biggest learning for me was developing the pattern. And it took me a long time, even in class, to get that word stuck in my head. It's, it's a pattern. And that was the biggest challenge for me is creating a pattern and following the pattern to determine whether that pattern is good or we need to change that pattern. Um, pattern, that was the biggest challenge for me. Yeah, the, the just, word pattern. The, the total Rather encompassment. Uh, as opposed to processes. I, I yeah. stuck with the word of process. Um, and it, we had that discussion even in our class, processes yeah. and, and patterns. So understanding the, the total encompassment of, of the word pattern and what it really means, that was, that was a big change for me. Okay. I'm glad you've – and it's no problem that you've struggled with that because it means you're going into your yellow zone and embracing something new. That's, that's, that's good, and thank you for persisting. But it is an important point is that, is that Carter, the Carter – the two Carter are patterns that help you develop um, root, uh, habits, if you like, sound mm-hmm. habits – the, if you think of them as process, they tend to get stuck. Whereas if you mm-hmm. think of them as patterns to develop sound habits, they're less inclined to get stuck in the stuck in the mud, so to speak. Sean, I might just duck to you. Same question. Um, what was your, in terms of practicing Carter and getting started, what was your biggest learning uh, that you've experienced, and what adjustment might you might you make if you were to have another, if you were to do it again? If, if I was doing the same same thing over again, in other words, uh, re, you know, uh, starting back from last April, uh, the key thing when, when we pulled the leadership group together and I gave them the introduction to Kata and what it was all about, again, it was it was it was well received, um, but but as we and, and, and began the practice, I needed to uh, have weekly scheduled. Uh, meetings with the leadership group to really, really have a good feel for how are you involved and yeah, what right. are you doing? What are you doing to help drive these experiments? Uh, if uh-huh. they're during the course of the experiments, you know, I wasn't there to be, and that was the other part. Um, if, if you find out that your, your experimentation cycles are, are getting long and they're getting longer to get, basically what we're looking to do is to find out a true reflection based on all four team input, uh, multiple angles of leadership involved so that they recognize when the experimentation points are not being really utilized. You know, you, yeah, you, right. you have a parameter you, because of a lack of a work standard. So, <clears throat> so you have to make sure they're with you. You're re, you're, if you were to revisit it, you would help, you would make sure they're with you rather than potentially doing things that might be opposing what you uh your experiment or what you're trying to do yeah not and not just opposing but also contributing to the progress sure. yeah, uh, yeah exactly you know recognizing hey look that, that's that you're not following the the experimentation protocol here you, you're going to skew the information that we're getting back uh, yeah, uh sure. so uh instead i found myself trying to manage man, manage that on a 24-hour clock yeah exactly. and yeah, it just, you know, it was just not the, the most, uh, uh, it wasn't the most uh, optimal way to uh, uh, utilize the personnel who who were aware and were uh, supposed to be involved with the experimentation process. Cool. So we, we, we eventually got where we wanted to be. And we actually, um, we actually already without the other two phases, We've reduced the elastic downtimes to uh, four and four and a half percent of our okay. total downtime. 
So, so we had scientific, a scientific. Your scientific thinking has helped you get there. Yes. Which and, is, I guess, know, your next your next stage is to get others involved. I imagine. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Infect others. Getting others involved, but we're also going to uh, follow through on the on on the current you know the target conditions, which is to change it so that we've got everything covered with standardized work from the, you know the material arriving at the line to the time it's going out in the finished product. Yeah, that's so there's sustaining going to be three the phases conditions. In there. Yeah, sustaining yes, the target well, conditions. And, and, if you like. Yes, and, and then also, yes, absolutely, creating the standardized work that the employees have a clear, clear understanding of what it is we're trying to do. Okay. Uh, and and I, I still have to meet and find out, do we want to begin introducing the storyboard to the teams? So no I, I have to find that out yet. And, and, no and once I do, I can report back. Sean, and our time's up. And Dustin, thank you very much for joining us at short notice. Sean, thank you very much for your description. Just very quickly, James Addis asked about Carter and A3. Very quickly, James, Carter, if you're happy to email me and get my contacts through Lean Frontiers, but Carter sits in behind A3 thinking. So scientific thinking strengthens and sits in behind A3 thinking, uh, even as it sits... Um, uh, without the Carter side, uh, the, you'll see the PTCA cycle sitting in behind A3 thinking. A Carter approach to patterns can help strength, that Dustin referred to, can help strengthen A3 thinking. And project management and Carter approaches, I guess project management um, can be strengthened through scientific thinking. Uh, the plan becomes the hypothesis. In project management, the plan becomes the hypothesis and we're continually testing our progress against that plan and adjusting when necessary. But we're well over time. Uh, Sean and Dustin, thank you very much for joining. I appreciate your time. And with a little bit of luck, we may see you both at Carticon uh, next year. That would be great. And if, Most definitely. If you are there, then anyone who, uh, would be welcome. People who are on this webinar, please come along to Carticon and then you can talk directly to people who are having a crack at uh, a practicing Carter like Sean and Dustin. Thanks and thanks, Lean Frontiers. Thank you, everybody. We look forward you. to seeing you again Thank soon. Thank you, Oscar.